Get it? <laughs> you and I in a little toy shop buy a bag of balloons with the money we've got. It's a cop. In the hospital still. I'm waiting for uh, the nurse to come in and clean my wound. There I was, living a life I kind of sort of loved. It was a boundaryless, people-pleasing dream. But then one day, it hit me. <sighs> A potato drive through taco. I knew something was off because my, at the time, beloved used to eat those. After much escalation, a phone call brought me to my knees and I didn't even know that happened. making me all the more determined to cling to this life that obviously did not want me. But then I heard a voice. And that voice was Jennifer Brunick. You could be done with this. It's time to move on. So, I went to the therapy on a sliding scale. You need to fill your cup. I have a cup? No one told me I have a cup! Be honest, be kind. I'd forgotten that I could be both. <laughs> Somehow I had resigned myself, completely given up myself to create this life that I had been so committed to that just didn't want me. So, in the ambiance of the testing of the emergency broadcast system, I reflect. Was I going to marry the person that I wanted to marry? No. Was I going to be a big shot event coordinator that I had, like I had worked so hard to be? No. Was my friend going to survive his liver cancer? No. Was I going to be a throbbing mess for a while. Did it? Yes, yes, I was. Um, did it all happen in an unfair and cruel way? Yes. 
Was my heart broken? Yes. It had been broken open. And I was literally a throbbing, raw possibility. So after the initial shock and the feelings of revenge, I was a little vengy for a while, um, subsided. I realized that uh, I was going to do whatever it takes to fill my cup and also find out what that means. So eventually my therapist said that I no longer needed scheduled appointments. Luckily we had worked through all of my abandonment issues at that time. But she had left me with some advice of integrating various selves, including the inner child. So I decided that I was going to go meet that little gal. So the more that I got in touch with trying to figure out, you know, what this, what this all is all, is all about, um, I remembered that I liked writing and performing and a conversation that I'd had maybe six years prior in a bar kept coming to mind. So uh, Esther, am I saying that right? Esther, correct? Yeah. So anyways, as I was telling you earlier, I went up and hiked the, uh, you know, superior hiking trail, you see. And I tell you, I'm the best hiker ever. I'm always watching how many grams I'm taking up there. I'm making sure that I'm, you know, doing everything as efficiently as possible. I hike better than anybody has ever hiked, you see. So if I can do it, you might be able to do it. But, you know, I mean, that's just because I'm really, really great at it. So maybe, you know, maybe one day, you know, down the line, if you ever really, you know, kind of get into such a thing, maybe, maybe you can do this, okay? Now I had known that exact moment that I wanted to know that trail. But I needed about maybe three years of being in out of control drunk. But that's a different movie. The Superior Hiking Trail, or the SHT, is a 300-mile footpath along the Minnesota North Shore. It begins at the Wisconsin and Minnesota border and ends at the U.S. and Canadian border. Please note that Grand Portage is also on the U.S. and Canadian border, as this information may wow you later. So following the guidance of my inner child and not trying to try and make myself be somebody, I started meditating more and kind of discovering that I had this inner voice, which I always knew I had, but you know, somehow I had given that all up. And um, I discovered that I was inspired to start a YouTube channel and write a grant and incorporate the Superior Hiking Trail in that somehow. So I got a grant uh, to get a GoPro and a new phone and a Chromebook. Thank you, Prairie Lakes Regional Arts Council and McKnight Foundation. Thank you, thank you. And I set an intention. And put it on my fridge. As an adventurous, empowered, creative woman who loves being in nature and with self, I easily hike 25 miles of the SHT and create a film that assists other people to connect with nature and themselves. E-M-H. Okay, so it's my first night here on the trail. There's a campsite that is one mile down that way. There are lots of cars in the thing, or in the lot, and I'm not going to lie. I am scared out of my mind, but I'm going to do this because I know that it's a, 
it's the kind of scared I get like before doing a performance. So this is going to be something. Well, the trail shows me what it is right away. I am not afraid anymore. <laughs> I am now marching down, ready to be in the wilderness for three days. to turn so instead of hiking three miles today I think I'm gonna be doing like ten and yes I've been a little <laughs> whining and stuff but this lake's pretty So I wish I had footage of me winding my way up of one, one of the rock piles. But I was kind of doing this like, like that for real. And um, I used to maybe think bad about that or that it would like ruin my time. But it's okay that I just wind for a little bit. And you know what? Yeah, I'm going more miles than I thought I was going to today, but that's fine. It's the journey, right? Trail gets sweet. This could be a cute little city park trail. I've been asking that I be changed to someone who can enjoy just the fleeting moments because obviously we can't see everything but I'm so glad that I took that wrong turn <laughs> I'm glad Once in a while you do step into a space of a trail and you're just like, I don't want to leave here. Like, I don't know if you can see all these white flowers. But I am the moment. And the moment moves on.
So I did a lot of miles today, even though it's not really about the miles. Let's just say I walked. And I finally found a camping spot. I'm ready to just read some book. Go to sleep. I got blueberries on my mouth. And the last hike of the night. Just wait for it. <laughs> Anyone who wants to romanticize this, I give you the latrine. <laughs> the latrine of dreams. That could have been a wolf. Oh, what the hell? Oh! Nothing. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what to say. It's a freaking beautiful evening and. I'm just really happy to be here. Decided to switch up some plans. I'm gonna actually go back through like Bean Lake and everything and drive to Tetaguch and then do a hike up to Raven Rock. And that's okay. Kind of funny because now that I've come up with this new plan, um, I actually had this thought, um, like I was trying to explain why it's a good idea. And then I had this thought, I was like, well, you don't really do explain yourself to yourself. <sighs> it's true. <laughs> this is the feeling of the cup. An extension of that last thought. Don't have to explain myself to anybody else either. <laughs> I'm ready. about the trail is that I don't try to avoid mud so much anymore. <laughs> oh, I can make my own little path. <laughs> Yesterday I actually stepped on like a branch bridge sometimes and then sometimes you just gotta trust your boots. Oh shit! <laughs> They're waterproof. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so there's been a little bit of change of plans. I'm gonna actually head over to Split Rock. First, I'm gonna have a burger here in Beaverville. Oh really? When my nephew was little and in his high chair, he'd be like enjoying his food so much that it would make these like Frankenstein noises like mm. well, anyway that's how I feel right now and that's kind of how I want to feel all the time bless you be the big so I do come up to the North Shore at least once a year or at least I have been for like the last four years and when I was driving up here I realized that all of those trips that I have taken have nothing to do with what I'm doing now and that's kind of beautiful, just to be fresh. Ah. Relaxing, I mean, right after the 
uh, beach rocks. Um, it was interesting. This man, um, at, when I was coming back to the parking lot this morning, um, after hiking, you know, like three miles or 3.8 miles up and down those rocks, this man was like, uh, how was it? And I was like, it was awesome. But to be honest, there's some whining periods. And he's like, well, that's where the adventure is. And pff, yeah, and other metaphors, right? Look at this pretty rock. That's a beauty one. Mm. I don't know, I just love being near this lake. paved road. That's what I'm gonna do. Well, I am back <laughs> on the SHT. <laughs> you can tell by my steady incline. I'm inclined. Now they tell me. So I did hear a rustling in the bushes and I don't know, like my hairs on my arms did stand up a little bit, but I just started singing really loudly and uh, kept walking. So <laughs> this one's for the bears and I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more just to be the one who walked a thousand miles just because she wanted to. These are the cuts where I just eat peanut butter stuff.
right, so this is where I stayed. I didn't do a lot of talking last night on account of the river. But what was funny is that everything was like 1.8 miles is kind of just like the standard now. When I see where something is, it's 1. 1.8 miles and so I was just telling myself I mean I knew that there were campsites around but the map was a little bit didn't say the mileage or anything and there were no signs and I'm like guess what I might just have to power through 1.8 miles and then literally after I was okay with that idea I saw a sign and it was probably one of the nicest campsites I've ever been at it's like that um, scene in Clueless where he's like, everything in the valley is 20 minutes. Everything on the SHT is 1.8 miles. I also love how I have crud on my face all the time. Mostly chocolate. To the wild blue yonder, off we go. I don't even know that song, but check out this waterfall. Well, <laughs> there's another one that's more impressive. Ah. <laughs> Get you come. Oh. Woo. All right. <gasps> Spaceship or a clam or a mushroom as it is or no word at all. I don't know who I am, and I love it. This is my truth, and if you don't feel it, don't worry about it because I'm not going to worry about your truth. I'm going to trust you to yourself. I don't have to worry about making decisions because the moment decides itself. <sighs> Much to my chagrin sometimes. So behind me here is Crazy Bay. I don't know. It doesn't look so crazy. It probably just has a bad rep because it is what it is without apology. When I come to groves of trees like this, I think of all of my grandmothers and I hear their violins, whether they were empowered or felt that they had no options. And I breathe and I take steps for all of our grandmothers and aunties and beings and all emboldened spirits in these bodies that are temporary, that belong to Gaia and she will greatly receive them. But while we are animate, let us connect with her.
May all spirits be emboldened. May all bodies be safe. May Gaia connect with us. It wasn't love, but a multitude of gratitude in darkness that wasn't darkness, but invisible flashes of all possibilities, limitless and in indivisible vastness. And I think there was a spaceship, but forget about that for a moment where moments didn't exist. A languageless voice clapped. Good job, beloved volunteer. And I, that wasn't an I, answered, wait, I don't think I'm done being her. All right, so oftentimes I do get little boils and I put plantain on them and they usually go away. Well, that didn't happen and I got this huge, as the surgeon said, softball sized Kind of abscess and I was like no I'm gonna I'm gonna pour tea tree on it and everything's gonna be okay but I was laying in my bed and I couldn't move and I was like okay should I actually go to the hospital and my inner voice was like yes and I'm like well no and then my inner voice was like do you want to die in three days and I was like no and I and now that I'm listening to my inner voice, I got into my car and I drove up and the song Boys to Men, End of the Road was playing, you know. Although we've come to the end of the road. And I was like, no, no, not today. I have more road left. <laughs> and um, they admitted me. I had surgery. Tomorrow's my birthday and I get surgery for my birthday. Thank you. Oh, I'm the queen of IVs, by the way. These aren't even all of these aren't even all the IVs I have. They've narrowed it down to one. <laughs> and uh, oh, this is from the blood taking. This place is pretty great. It's kind of like a hotel, except they take your blood like every hour. <laughs> Otherwise, it's awesome. Look at this cherry Italian ice. That's classy. Keep it classy. <laughs> I'm wearing a gown. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get stop now? <laughs> okay. So there was this aspect of myself, and it was me at maybe like 23, 25. Um, I was 260 pounds and just a drunk and lonely and so sad. And this is a part of myself that I didn't want to look at um, or integrate. And part of me just thought that when this whole cyst thing happened, that it was that part of me trying to get my attention. And I realized that um, I think what that part of me wanted me to know was that I'm so loved. 
even though when I was her, I didn't think I was. She couldn't even see it. So she got my attention. <laughs> and I'm freaking loved. I'm freaking loved. In fact, I am love. And I'm going to be even more ferocious now. As I was having a hard cry, I looked over and realized this whole time, Grand Portage is here in my room and it is on the U.S.-Canadian border, which is also where the Superior Hiking Trail ends. So I'm off to New Prague, Minnesota now to take care of this uh, gapy, that's gapy with an umlaut, and uh, get the diabetes under control and start this new chapter. Grab portage in the room the whole time. This is my first walk outside in like 11 days. And <laughs> I'm feeling really good. The wound's a little stingy. Um, but I'm just really happy to be outside. This is the most amazing walk I think I've been on ever. Like, I'm really happy to be alive. <laughs> Basically at this point, there's no such thing as modesty anymore. If I see anyone who has gauze, I'm just lifting my leg for them. <laughs> Outtakes. <laughs> I can relate to this tree. So I'm going to start to be doing my own wound care today and learning how to do that. And I feel like the first part of this journey, like in the ICU and like the almost dying and stuff was about to learn about kind of that agape love. And then the last part here in the transitional care was to learn kind of about how to go deep um, within myself. Kind of that love like I've never imagined. So. just had this idea that we're kind of all living for each other and everything that I've done now is for the highest benefit of all. Walking in the supermarket makes me feel like a normal person. I'm walking among the people. <laughs> I just found out that I most likely will be going home um, at the end of the week. And I think <laughs> what I've learned from all this is kind of that whole thing that I learned on the trail too, is that this body belongs to Gaia. She will take it back when she wants. Um, but for some reason I chose to stay in it a little while longer and be with her. Sally here and I'm going to be going zip lining for the first time here. My friend Johnny F not only encouraged me but is making sure that I'm doing the damn thing. He's pacing back there. Um, not your first time. <laughs> and yes. look at the detail on his van here. This guy is the out of control. We are going to have a good time. Our it's like that. It's just oh my god. Okay. I don't know why I'm so scared. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. 
just make sure. All right. Oh my God. I don't know. But there's no getting down, is there? Okay. Holy shit. Wait, I'm not ready. Wait, can I just, oh my God. I'm so sorry. I don't know why I'm freaking out. But I'm safe. This is about the height of the tower. Okay. You were like 175 feet in the air. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And thanks for your patience. Intense. I just had like a cathartic moment. It's a small place to have it. <laughs> okay, how do I get out? Sorry. Okay, oh, thank you. Holy fuck! Thank you. Oh my goddess. Thank you. Thank you. So, this is the eagle eye, and this is where I actually had a pause and was afraid to step off. And the thing is, is that since my incidents in the hospital, I haven't really felt afraid. And it was just amazing to feel that fear and not worry about everybody else, but shout, you know, I'll be over there in a minute and then just step off into that white, knowing that I was safe. It's funny because I was just thinking like, you know, I'm going to have this deformity and I still love me. And um, I'm going to through hike that trail. <laughs>